forgiveness. Now, there's a lot of, of hard preaching that needs to be done, and I would say probably even the majority of the preaching needs to be hard preaching against sin and against wickedness and, and having high standards and, you know, how we ought to be living our life. But we need to have a proper balance in our life of love, mercy, forgiveness, long-suffering, all these great attributes that God possesses and that he wants us to have also. And we could never lose sight of this because when we start losing sight of, of keeping the proper balance, people have a tendency to, to get this holier than thou type of an attitude. They tend to get more lifted up in pride. I'm going to be preaching about pride later tonight. So the two kind of go hand in hand, but we're starting off going into these aspects. And what we see in Micah chapter seven, there's obviously a lot of doom and gloom in the first uh, the, the, almost the whole chapter, the whole first portion, there's a, there's a lot of judgment coming. But what we see at the very end of the passage in verse number 18, the Bible says, Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. The Bible is saying we have a God that yes, he does get angry. Yes, God's going to bring judgment. Yes, God is a God that will do these things. And we need to be aware of that. And we need to live our lives in a way such that we're, we're respecting God and understanding that there is judgment. There is punishment. You do reap what you sow. But, but thank God that God doesn't retain his anger forever. That we get ang And this is in the context especially of, of his people, you know, the remnant of his heritage. Because people who aren't saved, people who aren't born again, people who aren't children of God... That anger does continue forever in the pits of hell. That is something that lasts forever. But for his people, people who are born again, people who are saved, people have already put their trust in Jesus Christ, you know, God still gets angry with you. God gets angry with us. Just as much as sometimes I get angry with my own children. But thank God his anger doesn't last forever and he actually delights in showing mercy. God wants to show mercy on people. God wants us to have his mercy come upon us. It says in verse number 19, he will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. God's a good God. We need to remember this attribute, this aspect of God, that he has this compassion upon us so that when we live our lives, we don't have to be, you know, we, we ought to have high standards. We ought to, to not bend when it comes to compromising on what's right and wrong, on what the Bible says, on these various things. But at the same time, we need to be able to exhibit compassion upon other people and not always take the hardest line possible and just have no tolerance for people to even just making mistakes. Now, we're not saying that the sin is justified. We're not saying that it's okay to get off into sin. But we're going to try to, to gain a godlike type of an attitude and response to sin. Does God get angry when we sin? Yes, he does. But does God keep his anger forever? No. Is God quick to forgive and to pardon? Yes, he is. God's quick to show his mercy. God's quick to be compassionate upon us. But with God, it all comes down to our hearts. Right? God's not looking to, to keep anger against his people and to just continue to, to bring judgment and destruction and doom and gloom. That's not what he wants. He will continue to do what's necessary for us in judgment for the purpose of getting us back, getting our heart right with him.